Alright, this is probably one of my most brutally honest videos I could possibly come up with. If you want to not watch it, then click off. I don't know why you clicked here. If you want to see something honest, watch the whole video. Okay, what I mean by honest is by some parts are really, really, really cringy, okay? So, try and take me at least some sort of level of seriousness here. How's it going, everyone? It's Samo. Uh, I recently have been, like, obsessed with this one girl. I'm being honest, okay? That's what I've been thinking of for the past, like, two days. And, um, at this point, I'm pretty sure you know who you are. Uh, that I like, honestly, but the sticky situation that I'm in is that I don't want to have a girlfriend and neither do my parents, but, like, like, I've already stated in, like, maybe four honest videos before this, maybe my first honest video, where I stated, um, my crush was there, I, I, I didn't say the name, but, you know what I'm trying to say here, uh, it's, it's kind of weird like the situation that I'm in because I say that I don't want to um, have a girlfriend because for one it's gonna take from away from my uh, school and for two I honestly think I'm just too young and I don't want to have people looking over me and some people say no they won't but I've I've seen very bad things happen at Nosset where they just talk about each other all the time and a lot of drama like that goes down I'd rather have like none of that of there, but, um, honestly, I'm just trying to listen to God, but it's, it's very difficult to really, for me, right now at the moment, like, I'm going through a really difficult time, where I don't know what's going on with my brain, I don't know what's going on with my body, what's, um, like happening mentally, because, for one, um, I have been, like, having palpitations for a while, and that's just been there. That's kind of, that's like one of my least concerns. My biggest concern is my memory loss. For some reason, like, I'll totally blank out on something. A lot. Now, um, it may be iron deficiency. It may be something else. What thing I'm worried about is, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be direct with you. My mom has Huntington's, and I think that I might have it. And that's what I'm so, so worried about, because that's not a nice thing for a kid to think about. That's not a good thing for a kid to ponder on. Now, I was talking with my doctor, and they honestly looked kind of... They said, here, go get genetic counseling and genetic um, tests. Which, I mean, for me... That's like, yo, if if I have to get a genetic test, something awful is happening. And I've been having this stress on me and having this difficulty and just thinking that what's going on, like, what is going on with me? It feels as if it's getting worse, but not, I can't really, it kind of get gets worse and more symptoms are added onto it over time, which was my biggest concern of Huntington's or any sort of autoimmune disorder. disorder. Um, I've been feeling just honestly disinterested in playing video games, even off of my... Actually, no. On my ADHD medicine, primarily, I'm kind of disinterested in playing video games, like, on it, because I'm so... Like, it's, why, it's basically wiring my brain to do work, and, you know, you may think that sometimes video games, they have objectives, but... The majority of the time, they're kind of just like the same old thing, like capture the objectives, you know, that kind of stuff. And I haven't been enjoying um, single player games very much, or for baby terms, basically just movies, quote unquote, because a single player game is essentially a movie. Like if it's like a campaign for a game, like let's say Halo or Call of Duty, they have like campaigns that lead you through a story. I've not been having fun with that, and I I really don't know what's going on. And I think that me just kind of seeing myself grow up, I look back, I look back to the old times when I wasn't feeling sick. I feel that 
if I do that, I might feel better, and it won't, it won't help. The only thing that can help me is God, because literally all the doctors that I've been coming across is, they, they really don't know what's going on. They, they haven't found anything wrong, wrong, quote unquote, that's going on with me, and my dad said it's just growing pains. Well, that would have been relevant maybe about three m months ago, because, you know, having, you know, groin pain and leg pain is, well, for one, yeah, yeah, you know, the groin, that, for guys, that, that happens. But the legs, they, they just are sore. That's kind of going away as it's there longer, and I'm getting more used to it. And, man, it's a lot for just me to face because I'm so young. Comparing to, like, how old other people are, basically, um, an eighth of my life is technically done comparing to, like, a lot of the, you know, life expectancy and whatnot sort of things. So I'm trying to, like, trying to do something at the same time I'm just holding it together. I'm, I'm barely holding on, let me say. I'm, I'm barely just grasping the idea that God's real. I'm like just holding on at the moment and it's it's kind of hard for me to even like be interested in things and as of right now I I kind of you know Facebook stalking what an awesome thing memory loss and pain and honestly I see my mom and she's sitting on the couch all the time she's sitting there just kind of being a potato, essentially. And I feel that same thing's going on with me, where I come home and I literally go to my bed and start playing video games, yet I'm totally not even interested in it. So I can see why my mom's watching TV. She doesn't really change it too much, and... It feels as if it's just so lifeless, like, so... So, like... Why is my family like this? Like, why do we have all these sicknesses? And I say right now that we have all these sicknesses, and we have these storms in our life, in a continuous storm, a continuous battle, to refine us, to make us focus on what's important in life, make us focus on these things are unimportant. Now focus on the things that we need to get done. And schoolwork and making connections with people family. Those have been more prominent. The fact that I'm disinterested in uh, video games and whatnot. And for some reason, like, a lot of my reasoning has gone, and I've, I've kind of just, not reasoning, but, well, for one, I actually read this article in my school. Um, when you're in love with someone, boy, if you don't, you're, um, your prefrontal cortex is actually like it's it's not even like there, okay? It's like your reasoning system isn't kind of there. So, for one, I'm kind of slowed down by that. And uh, honestly, I I have been thinking about that person all like week. I've been thinking about that person for the past year. And some may say, Sam, why don't you go for it? You don't know the awkward situation that I'm in. You don't know the the situation that I live in. You don't know my story. So please, I I just beg you to understand that I can't just get a girlfriend because I don't I don't want to just get a girlfriend so I can escape from reality here. I don't want to get a girlfriend so that she will satisfy me. No, I don't want that. I want God. I want something better in my life, something higher in my life other than just video games at this point, because video games are not entertaining me, and video games, uh, the thrill of trickshotting is definitely gone from me, like, I used to get so hyped whenever I hit one, and now I'm, I'm just not even interested in doing that at all, and it's very likely I may have Huntington's because it's a gene, it's a, it's an inherited disease, it's a disease that if one of your parents have it, or one of your grandparents have it, actually no, one of your parents have it, you're 50%, like, you have a 50% chance of getting it. And so far, uh, it's only seeming to be me.
And some may ask, why me? Why you? Why do you have these diseases? Why is your house like the way it is? Why, why do these things happen? Why do people die? Very, very tough things. They, they, it's, it's hard to explain. It's hard to say why these things happen to us. Why does God let this happen to us? That has some that has some little merit there. Why does God have this happen to us? It's not that we've done something wrong. What we all have, we've all done something wrong, but it's not punishing us because of that. It's life. And it happens. Because look, alright. If you if you do not if you want to watch politically correct um, videos by me, you're not going to really see them. You're really not. And from this point forward, I'm not going to be like limited to other people's opinions about politics, so I could essentially grow by expanding my audience to other people. I just I just want to be honest. I want to be real. I want to be truthful in the way I speak. I don't want to lie to people. And I want to help people as much as I really need people to help me. And I feel that's kind of taking its toll. It's I'm trying to help people as much as possible, but I myself not feeling very good. I'm really not. And I pray that this is just an iron deficiency anemia, because that is curable. That's treatable. But you know what isn't is the things that I'm worrying about. And things I'm worrying about that are going on in me are amongst the following ALS, MS, Huntington's, any autoimmune disorder. But the thing is, that's me thinking what I have. That's, that's a hypochondric kind of uh, ideal. That's a hypochondric, if you don't know what that means. I think I said that like two videos ago ideas on communication, something like that. Like, my opinions on it and stuff. Man. Why must a kid have to worry about this? I don't know. It's all about, it's all about their situation, and everyone's story is different, and you have to understand that. Everyone has a background. So, sometimes, the craziest, most bizarre things to you may seem like a normal, everyday thing to someone else. Like, pet peeves, you know. Now, I don't really have many, but kind of a little bit OCD, not really, but... I'm, I'm just a human being, and we all are, and we should probably come to know each other's backgrounds. We, we seem to lack the knowledge of other people and just them being them. We seem to not communicate, not to talk thoroughly and not to be honest. And this is the whole point of my this 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 series, an honest video. Honesty goes a far way and I know I'm not saying being honest when uh you see something like that, say you see something you call them quote unquote ugly. That's that's not okay. That's really mean, actually. That's not honest because in God's eyes we are all beautiful and we all have creation. And even though I may be worrying about these things, it's better for me to be in heaven than here because <laughs> this place ain't getting no better. No, I can I can talk like all day long, and I wish I had someone to talk to. I wish I had um, someone of similar faith, someone of similar ideas. Now that's where my youth group comes in, but I need to make a Bible club because people need to know this: that I'm not completely depressed in my state of worrying about this. I am just kind of holding on. I'm holding on to God. I'm holding on to his truths and what he has in store for me. 
And that may not be the biggest thing. No, it will not be the biggest thing. It will not be the biggest thing you can possibly ever imagine. Oh, you're going to become a millionaire. That's what a lot of people seem to strive for and go for. But what we need to do, what we need to do is hold on. Hold on to God and hold on to His promises. Because He's not going to let us go. The time is not now. We're still alive. We're still here. So what are you doing with your life? Are you making the most of all of your circumstances? Are you making the most out of your school? Are you making the most out of every situation, every friend? Are you making the most out of God? Are you getting everything that God has for you? Because He has more for you, but you have to be open to it. And that means being humble and being humiliated. Because... I can't, I can't say I love God without being harassed in some way, shape, or form these days. Because it's so frowned upon and called homophobic. Let me tell you, I'm not here to hate you. I'm not here to hate you. That is not my job. It's not my job to condemn. It's not my job to do those things. My job is to let you know God and let you know what is real in my life, and I've seen it. My dad has been diagnosed with cancer for about four or five years now. He's stage four prostate cancer. And he was told that he was only going to survive six months. Six months. Now let me tell you something. Words are words. Thoughts are thoughts. But God is bigger than your words or words and thoughts and thoughts. And God is bigger than my problem. God is bigger than your problem. He is still alive and he's still here. He may not be well, but he's still alive. He's my God has kept him alive. If you don't agree with me, just leave it this like I, I honestly wanted to let you know. I wanted to let you know what's real in my life. So all I come to say here is that no matter what you're going through, no matter what problems you see, or you think that are there, or are coming up, every cloud has its silver lining. And that storm will have storytelling, because God got you through it. God made a way. Sometimes my, my circumstances, they seem slim. They seem, no. God is bigger. That's bigger than your problems and these ideas that you put in your brain that people don't like you because you're fat. People don't like you because you're ugly. Lies like those, things like depression can be overcome. But it's, it's so hard nowadays to talk about Jesus and have people take you seriously. People actually think, man, this, this guy's a buffoon. This guy's crazy. Saying a whole bunch of wacko stuff and no one will believe him. Stand strong. We stand out. We stand out different from the crowd and we aren't the world. We are not the same. I just want to see. People understand this truth. At least come to hear about it. And I'm not sure if I could recap it in a single sentence because I really can't. Because my testimony is very long. If you want to talk to me about God and how he's done things in my life, you could talk to me. Send me a message in, on YouTube or Skype me, Xbox, real life. It's so when you're caught in a landslide, I'll be there for you, I'll be there for you. And when the rain gives you sunshine, I'll be there for you, I'll be there for you. And every time that you're lonely, and every time that you feel alone, you should know I'll be there for you, I'll be there for you, I'll be there for you.